Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass. Modding is a PC gaming institution, and because the Steam Deck is in fact a PC, you can mod all of your games on your Steam Deck and take them with you on the go like never before. Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass. This is Volume 2. This episode is dedicated to the art of modding your games. But let's just say your Steam Deck is your very first PC. What is modding and why should I bother? In its core form, modding is just modifying games. If you're someone with a console background, this may sound foreign to you. But games on PC can be modified by people. But you may be asking yourself, what can mods do? Well, for starters, you can swap out models and just swap around graphics and whatnot. But for certain games, you can actually add new items, new levels, new missions, new enemies, new content. But not just that, you can change the gameplay substantially. You can rebalance the game if so desired. You can even fix buggy games. Looking at you, Bethesda. But please keep in mind that modding games is not a one-size-fits-all solution. So before we get started, tell me what games you want to mod. And if you thought this was a good video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. It'll really help me get noticed by the YouTube algorithm. Them. So you have multiple ways of modding your various games. The easiest way to mod your games, of course, is Steam Workshop. If a game supports Steam Workshop, then the game developers have done like 90% of the work for you. It's super easy to install mods as well. Essentially, you would go into a game's workshop page, which you can access from the game's page, and then find a mod that looks cool. I don't know, you can download this mod, I guess. Press the subscribe button and repeat this multiple times for as many mods as you want to install. The mods should download to your Steam Deck directly, and it should be set up for you just like that. If you want to install a mod, definitely read the mod description before you install it so you can understand how to use it. But as you can see here, the game is now successfully modded. There are two games I'd like to showcase. First and foremost is Rivals of Aether. Rivals of Aether is a platform fighter, and the base roster is really fun. But, you know what's even more fun? Playing as Ronald McDonald, or Among Us, or Goku. Now that's pretty cool. Let's take another game with workshop support for example. Starbound. Starbound is kind of like Terraria but in space. Part of me wishes Chucklefish would update the game. But another part of me is content that they left the game so moddable because the modding scene in this game is incredible. There's a great number of different races, different classes, different biomes, different items, different weapons, different combat mechanics, mods to add complex sciences, and way more. You can download and install mods from the workshop and it's super simple. There are sometimes mods that you have to download off of the internet and then install manually, and we'll cover that later. Workshop modding is very easy. And yes, your subscriptions are tied to your Steam account, so even if you go to another computer and download, I don't know, Slay the Spire, all the Slay the Spire mods that you subscribe to will be downloaded onto that computer as well. It's way easier than having to copy a bunch of mod files to and from your computers every time you add a new mod, right? But are there any real cons? Well, there are some cons. First and foremost, not every game supports Workshop. For you to conveniently use the Steam client to download and subscribe to mods, the game has to support Steam Workshop. There's a lot of games that support the Steam Workshop, but there's even more that doesn't support it. That said, if you go to a game store page, it'll tell you if it supports Steam Workshop or not. There's a good chance that you already own a couple of games that have Workshop support. The easiest way to know would be to create a dynamic collection with the Workshop tag. Every game you own that has Workshop support will be added to this list. And wow, I I own a lot more workshop games than anticipated. The second major con is that not all of a game's mods are on the Steam Workshop. There are some mods for games that, for whatever reason, just aren't on Steam Workshop. So yes, some of these mods are more salacious mods that really can't be on Steam Workshop. Sometimes more extensive mods cannot be found on the Workshop. Like for example, modifying the client itself, EXE modifications you won't find those in the workshop, at least not most of the time. Most of the time though, if the game supports Steam Workshop, then you can probably find the mods there. Another issue is that sometimes you have different mod configurations for your different systems for a reason. This is somewhat of a niche situation, but sometimes you have different mods for different reasons on different platforms. But of course, due to how the workshop works, when you subscribe to a mod, it downloads to both devices. So we covered the easiest way to get mods, and for the game 
games that support Steam Workshop, it's all you really need for the most part. But there are plenty of games that can be modded that don't have Steam Workshop support. But how is one to modify these on the Steam Deck? This is the part where we talk about desktop mode. You can access desktop mode by going into the power menu and switching to desktop from there. And you'll be greeted with this more computerized interface. It's got a taskbar at the bottom and it's got like a desktop, right? For the purposes of this video, you'll want to get used to two particular applications. The first of which is Dolphin. Dolphin is the file browser and you can go into folders and look at files and launch applications and such from there. If you've ever used a desktop computer before, it should be somewhat familiar to use. And secondly, your web browser, cause you'll be browsing the internet to download mods. I will preface this by saying that every game is different. Like literally, you can watch like two or three of my modding guides for games and the modding process for all of those games are wildly different. Some forms of modding are easy, some of them just require you dragging and dropping files into the game folder. Some require the use of launching through a mod manager to modify games. And some mods require that you make modifications to files within a Windows file system. A normal one anyways. If you're not modding games through the Steam Workshop, every game is going to require some sort of tutorial. And unfortunately, due to my limited library of games and also limited time, I can't make a tutorial for every single game ever. What I can say is that I got Mod Organizer 2 working on my Steam Deck once again. And this time, on my OLED Steam Deck. And this time, with Fallout New Vegas and all mods on my SD card. Isn't that crazy? Setting up Fallout New Vegas, more specifically A Tale of Two Wastelands, is a very involved process. So involved in fact that it requires a separate video. So I've already recorded all the processes and I've got all the steps written down. Now we just gotta make that video and show you guys how to do it. What is important to note is that mods can be unstable. Sometimes mods will just make your game crash. And yes, this includes mods uploaded to the Steam Workshop. So do take care and make sure that you don't accidentally download a thousand mods at once because you may not know what's breaking your game. For games like Rivals of Ether, you know, it's pretty easy to determine. If a game crashes when you pick a stage or when you pick a character, then it's pretty obvious which one's making your game crash. And for what it's worth, you should play the base version of the game without any mods before you mod the game. Mods can drastically change the game, so do an unmodded playthrough first. And some ask why is modding important? Well, some of the most popular games in the world were built off of the back of mods. Like Counter-Strike started life as a Half-Life mod, and Dota started life as a Warcraft 3 mod, which ended up leading to the creation of some of the biggest games in the world, like League of Legends or CS2. So yes, mods are not only fun, but they are in fact very important to the greater games industry. And finally, there's a third category of mods that people want me to cover. That being cheating, using programs like Cheat Engine or WeCheat or whatever, right? I'm not going to show you how to do that, especially if you're trying to cheat for multiplayer games, because honestly, if you're just trying to cheat in a multiplayer game, you may as well just put your controller down and never touch a video game ever again. But if you're trying to be like that one PC gamer journalist that cheated in Sekiro, then you'll have to find that arcane forbidden knowledge elsewhere, because I don't carry it here, not on this channel. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.